All right, hello and welcome. This is lesson nine of Last Epoch University, and this on offense is the first part of a two-part series on offense. This is also the third to last lesson, so we're getting towards towards the end here. Uh, a very important topic: dealing damage is basically what this is about, and dealing damage is what you need to kill monsters. And without killing monsters, well, you're not going to get very far in the game. So you're definitely going to want to understand at least the basics of how damage works in the game so that you have a better f understanding of when you're trying to compare two damaging stats and figure out which one is better, um, being able to make that decision intelligently. So the, the topic in, in general, at least for the first part, is going to cover added, increased, and more damage, which are stat types that are very important for the damage calculation. Everything starts, starts here. So amongst all the topics we talk about, Amongst both the lessons, this is the this is the the starting point in which you really need to have at least a basic understanding of what's going on here. Then we'll talk about critical strikes. Uh, we'll talk about shred penetration, and increased damage taken, and then next lesson we'll talk about hits versus damage over time, damage over time ailments, cast attack speed, damage conversions, and I believe we also we've talked about minions in there. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with this lesson. Added, increased, and more. Like I stated, very very important to how you're going to deal damage you're going to need these stats to deal sufficient damage starting with added which is kind of like the starting point of the damage calculation this is just a base amount of damage that's applied to your attacks and it's re represented numerically like plus four melee fire damage plus eight uh, uh cold bow damage uh plus 10 um, elemental spell damage etc so you definitely need this stat because this is what everything multiplies off of uh, and every skill has a every skill does damage. Every damaging skill has a base amount, a starting amount of damage, but they can be as low as one. So most of your damage is usually going to come from, or your added damage is usually going to come from other areas like your weapon, etc. Uh, increased damage it then multiplies from the base damage. So um, it's a, a percentage of it. So it can be like hundred percent increased damage. So if you have 20 added or 20 base damage, 20 added damage, and then 100% increase, it's going to multiply that 20. In that, that case, it'd be 40. Uh, all relevant sources of increase are added together before multiplying the base. So you can have increased damage on your weapon, you can have it on your ring, you can have it in your passive tree, etc. Have it from a global buff. Those are all added together, and then whatever that number is, is what multiplies the base to get the next to get the the larger number so for example we have 100 percent increased fire damage 100 percent increased bow damage if uh, that would be 200 percent increased damage for a fire-based bow attack it'd be 100 percent increased damage for a fire-based melee attack so it has to be of course the relevant source or else it doesn't apply uh, more is uh similar to increased damage but there's a big exception it's uh, if you have multiple sources of it, they don't add together. They don't add to increased damage. They are independent multiplicative sources. Each one will multiply your damage by whatever the number it is, which makes these more powerful. The additive is less powerful than multiplicative when you're talking about getting a larger number. You know that's that's just you know, math. Multiplicative better than additive, um, assuming both numbers are the same. And so typically you're going to want as many sources of more damage as you can get. Um, here's a simplified version of the damage equation for where we're at now. So we have the base damage. We times that by the, the all the sources of increased damage, which are added together. Uh, then we times that by a source of multiplicative damage, and then times that by another source of multiplicative damage, times that by another source of multiplicative damage, etc. Continue on until you've got all your multiplicative damage sources. All right, let's go through some examples. So um, we'll start with not having any more damage. We have 50 melee fire damage, 150% increased uh, fire damage, and 150% increased melee damage. Let's assume that this is a melee fire attack. And so both the increased fire and increased melee count. So we have 50 melee fire as our base times 150% increase plus another 150% increase, so a 300% increase, which gives us 200 damage total because 150 times 150 is three times the damage that we would have had. The actual formula is below. It's slightly more complicated, but really not if you can tell what's going on there with a one and whatnot. Um, but that's how to, how to make it. 50 times one plus 1 1.5 plus 1.5, and then you can get your get to 200 damage. Don't worry too much about that, though. The most important part, if you don't want to do the math, is just understanding how increased damage works and how it adds together. 
to uh, get you a larger number of, of multiplicative damage. Uh, example two, we will use less increased damage, but uh, we'll also use more damage in this in this calculation. So we have 50 melee fire damage, 100% increased fire, 100% increased melee, 25% more fire, and 30% more melee. In this scenario, we have less overall multipliers. So the other one, we had 300% total increased. This one, we have 200% increased, plus another 25 and our 30, so it's less than 300, but two of those are multiplicative sources. So we end up with 50 times 100% plus 100%, so 200% instead of 300%, but then times 25% and times another 30%, which gets us to 244 damage rounded, um, taking out the, uh, you know, the, the um, uh, yeah, the, little, the extra, 244 damage. Um, to get that, you get 50 times 100 times 100, so it's 200, so you have uh, 150 there, and then take the 150 times 25%, 1.25, and then take that number times 1.3. And that's a bigger number. You know, even though the overall percentages were less, because two of them are multipliers, you get quite a bit more damage. Instead of having your 200 damage, you get 244. So that's why mul uh, multipliers, the more damage side, are so important. Let's do example three. So in this case, we're going to have two types of damage that are, are different. So we have uh, melee fire and melee fizz, which means some of our sources may not apply to both. We have 100% increased fire, 100% increased melee. Okay, so the 100% increased melee applies to both because we've got melee fizz and uh, melee fire, but the increased fire will only apply to the melee fire. We also have 25% more fire, which again only applies to the melee fire, and then 30% more melee, which applies to both of them. So we have to calculate these independently and then add them together. We can't do them all in one equation. I mean, we could, but it'd be very complex. Um, it's much easier to do, do them separately. So we get a uh, fire is 25 uh, times 100% plus another 100%, then 25% for the the, um, the first multiplier for the, for the more fire, and then another 30% for the more melee for a total of 122 damage. The physical, we have 25, uh, 25 times 100%, just the 100% because the other one doesn't count, times 30%, no 25% because it's not fire again, so that doesn't count. The total of 65, and then we just add those together, 122 plus 65 equals 187 total damage. Uh, so keep uh, as a note, when base damage doesn't have a damage type, that means it's adaptive and will be determined by our skill tags. Uh, so for example, if we have adaptive damage, we have some here. We have plus 19 melee damage in this cleaver solution. We have plus 9 melee damage on this smoke weaver. Those are adaptive damage. Um, let's look at Umbral Blades here. It's got the cold tag on it, and so any damage applied by Umbral Blades um, will turn the adaptive damage into cold. So it'll be plus 9 melee cold and plus 19 um, melee cold um, on Umbral Blades. Actually, it wouldn't count for Umbral Blades because that's a throwing skill. Um, so let's look at Sync Strike, actually. So Sync Strike's a, a physical, dam a physical uh, skill, so physical melee. Those will both be uh, physical adaptive. Okay. Um... So the takeaway from this should be synergize your damage sources and use more multipliers than possible. If you're using multiple damage types, you're probably going to do less damage because it's going to be harder for you to find uh, sources of increased and, and more damage that work for both. And so if you can just use one damage source, you're better off. Some cases you can you can use multiple, but you have to keep track of where your increase and more sources are coming from and whether or not it makes sense. And then multi more multipliers are just really powerful. So make sure to get those when you can. Okay, let's talk about critical strikes. Critical strikes, which are always popular in ARPGs and one of my favorite things, I like them a lot more than dots personally. Uh, in this game, if you crit, you deal double damage as a baseline. So you're gonna do 100 damage, but you crit them, now you do 200 as a baseline with no additional stats added um, if your character has nothing extra. The character sheet on this is misleading. It says it's 200% uh, damage. That would, that would make it three times. That's not accurate. I am not sure why it's shown that way in the character sheet because it doesn't do this to increase damage, but it does, so just bear that in mind that the critical strike multiplier on your, your um, character sheet can lead you astray. Just do this math by hand. It's better. Uh, it effectively acts as another more multiplier, critical strike, uh, crit, crit damage does, because it's not increased damage, and it's not un it's not one of the other more, more uh, damage multipliers, so you add this one on top. Uh, so if you're doing the calculation, you do your added, you do your increased you do your more, and then you do your crit if, it, if it's an actual crit that uh, occurs. You can further increase the damage that you do on a crit with Critical Strike Multiplier. This is additive to the baseline double. So you have the 
If you have 50% critical strike multiplier on your gear, uh, then you have 150%. So now instead of doing double damage, you do 2.5 damage when you crit. This does not apply to dots at all. Dots can never, ever crit. So um, don't try to use this when you're doing a dot build. Critical strike chance caps at 100%. So you, the critical strike chance is what you're going to need to do to you know ensure that you actually get a crit. If you have 50% critical strike chance, then if effectively half of your hits will crit. The other half will not. If you have 100%, they all crit. Uh, if you have 100%, uh, it will guarantee crit against enemies. The exception is enemies with critical strike avoidance modifier. So these exist uh, in the monolith of fate. And overcapping does not help against critical strike avoidance. So if they have critical strike avoidance and you're at 120% crit chance, it doesn't matter. You're still going to... They're going to avoid whatever it says this. If it says they have 30% critical strike avoidance, then you're still only going to crit 70% of the time instead of 100%, despite having more than 100% critical strike chance. There is one exception to that, which is critical strike vulnerability which is an ailment that the rogue gets and can put on enemies, and it can reduce the amount of critical uh, strike avoidance that they have. But that's the only way to counter critical strike avoidance uh, currently in the game. Also worth noting that critical critical strike multiplier has no effective cap, as you can put on as much as you can find in the world. There, of course, is only so much you can get, uh, but some builds can get a lot of critical strike multiplier to do really large amounts of um, damage when they crit. Okay, so critical strike chance can go up to 100%. We mentioned this, but how do you know how much you have? It's not as straightforward as in some games. Uh, all skills can crit, or that can crit, have a have 5% base crit chance. So 1 in 20, that's for every skill currently that is a hit, has that. I can't think of any exceptions. Um, added crit is one of the sources of increasing the amount of critical strike you have, and then there's also increased critical strike chance. Added crit is just, an added, is just added to your base. So it's similar to, to base damage. So if you have plus five melee crit, it's an additional 5% chance to crit. So in that case, you'd have your 5% base, you have your 5% plus 5% melee crit, you have 10% crit chance on melees, on melee attacks. Um, increased crit is a multiplier of base and added. It's very it's similar to increased damage. So you take all of your sources of increased crit, and then um, you take those and multiply those off of whatever your base and added crit are. So let's take an example with uh, with both of these. We have plus five melee crit and 100% increased critical strike chance. Remember, we have our 5% our base on every skill, so that's always there. We also have our 5% added, so we have 10% total between base and added. And then we have our 100% increased, uh, increased crit, so that's going to double it, and now we have 20% chance to crit. Okay, moving on from critical strike chance, let's talk about shred, penetration, and increased damage taken. So these are stats that um, exist in other games, but maybe not with the same name. Um, increased damage taken probably is fairly similar in other games. The first important thing to note is that they all act as de facto more damage multipliers. This is slightly overly simplistic, but it generally holds. And this is because they increase the damage taken after all player sources have been accounted for. So, for example, you have done 100 damage, or you have you do a, deal 100 damage with your, your skill after the calculation is done, but you also have on the enemy that they take 10% increased damage, so now they take 110% or 110 damage, excuse me. So 10% more, that's a multiplier. Shred and penetration um, are, are uh, the first thing we'll talk about here, then we'll talk about increased damage taken after that. Shred and penetration are a little bit more um, nuanced, I guess, than increased damage taken because they reduce resistances. So, uh, harken back to our defensive uh, conversation about how resistances work. Um, if you have resistances, you, you, you uh, take less damage. These can shred or penetrate through resistances um, to cause the enemy to deal more damage. They are damage type specific, so like poison shred will only affect a, a poison, the poison resistance on the enemy. Uh, with the exception being armor shred, which we'll talk about here, I think, on the next slide. So, we'll get to that in a minute. Note that resistances can go negative. This is very important. So that means even if the enemy doesn't have any resistance, you still deal more damage with shred and penetration because you cause them to go into negative resistance, which causes them to take more damage. Um, remember from the defensive section that enemies have their own penetration against the player. At level 75 and beyond, they have 75% penetration, which means if you don't have any resistances, you take 75% more damage. It's the same thing for enemies. They would also take 75% more damage if you have 75% pen. Um, to figure out how much extra damage you're going to get, you add together um, 
both your shred and your penetration to figure out what their total resistance reduction is. Also note that even though there's a cap on how much resistance you can have, there's no negative resistance cap, so they can go below uh, 75, minus 75%, 75 so you can have enemies at minus 100%, which means that they take double damage. That's entirely possible. Okay, let's break this down um, between resistance shred, armor shred, and penetration, though, since these are a little bit different. We'll start with resistance shred. Resistance shred there's a, is an ailment that you can apply on hit. There's a chance that you'll do it. You can get over 100% and apply more than one stack. Um, it affects all damage of the damage type, including dots. So if you shred an enemy's uh, physical resistance and you apply bleeds, that will, that will increase the damage they take from bleeds because bleeds are a physical ailment. Each stack reduces the corresponding resistance by 5% or 2% on, on bosses. Um, and each stack lasts 4 seconds and is capped at 10 stacks. So if you have 10 stacks of physical shred, you will cause non-bosses to take 50%, uh, well, to be, have their resistance reduced by 50%, and then you will cause bosses to have their resistance reduced by 20%. If you have no other sources of, um, of like penetration or ways to reduce the amount of resistance they have, that's a 50% increase in damage and a 20% on bosses. If you have more, then it's additive. Uh, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, shock also works like lightning shred. Shock is a different ailment than lightning shred. So lightning shred is your like typical resistance shred, and then there's shock, which also reduces the lightning resistance they have and stacks independently of lightning shred. So you can have lightning shred and you can have shock on an enemy, and they can have uh, ten stacks of both, and then they're added together because it's just reducing the resistance. So lightning shred can reduce reduce uh, non bosses by fifty percent. Shock can also reduce it by fifty percent, so you can reduce it by one hundred percent with those two, or forty percent for bosses. Poison also works similarly, but the resistance shred caps at 30 stacks. Um, so you can have 30 stacks of, po of uh, poison's own built-in shred that's different from poison shred. Um, so 5% times 30, 150% uh, re um, reduced resistances to poison is what you can apply from poison itself. But note that poison, poison doesn't have a cap. That's just the, the resistance shred aspect of poison. So just kind of summarize what's going on here to try to. Um, you can get Poison Shred. It is a, a stat in the game that you can absolutely have. And then Poison itself has an inherent built-in type of Shred that is independent of that. So you can get 10 stacks of Poison Shred from the Poison Shred stat. And then Poison can also shred another 30 stacks on top for a total of 40 stacks. But Poison can be applied infinitely you just only you just it just caps at 30 stacks of that shred factor in it i hope that makes i hope that makes sense poison is a little complicated but um yeah it's not too bad uh armor shred is kind of like resistance shred except it's not affecting resistances at all instead it's affecting armor it reduces armor by 100 we talk about uh, armor in the defensive on the defensive side and what armor does which is it reduces the damage you take from hits well if you shred their armor then it increases the damage they take from hits. Um, and armor, like resistances, can go negative. So you can cause them to take more damage from giving them negative armor. Um, you can increase armor shred effect and duration. This is different than, a little bit different than resistance shred, where um, you got like, there's actually a couple of like weird things like shock can do some things like this. But anyway, armor shred can have uh, increased armor shred effect and duration, which causes it to. In effects case, reduce more armor. So instead of 100, if you had 100% shred effect, it would reduce each, each stack reduced by 200. So it would double the effectiveness of each stack of armor shred. Uh, and duration will just cause it to last longer, which means you'll have more stacks on the enemy at any given time if you're, if you're continuously attacking the enemy. Note that armor shred has no cap. You can put as many stacks of armor shred as you can get on it in the period of time that you have. But re armor reduction does have diminishing returns. Um, it is uh, similar to how armor works on a positive. So like armor caps at 85% and you'll never reach that. On the negative side, it caps at negative 85. This is unlike resistance where you can go well beyond the 75% uh, cap on the negative side. You, you do have a cap on armor shred on the negative and it is it is 85%. So there are diminishing returns as you get closer and closer to that, that cap. The first um, few um, stacks of armor shredder, the first few hundred or thousand armor that you shred off of them are far more potent and impactful than the later ones because they're getting closer and closer to that cap. Um, the other thing to note about um, armor 
or armor shred is just like armor it's more effective on physical than it is on other damage types it's still effective on those and most hit builds use armor shred even if they're not physical but it is definitely better on physical all right the last part of this is penetration Penetration works similar to Resistance Shred, but it doesn't need to be applied like Resistance Shred does. You don't need to hit the enemy and then apply an ailment. It's just a thing that you can have. Um, you can you can get sources of Resistance Shred for, or excuse me, from of, uh, of penetration from lots of different places. One example is the Shaman Tree has a bunch of penetration early on in the tree. Once you have that, it's just there, and every attack you do will um, the enemy will have less resistance to that attack. So, for example, if you have a 7% necrotic pen, then the enemy's resistance to necrotic damage is reduced by 7% on any necrotic attack. All right, that is the shred and the pen part. Let's talk about the increased damage taken. This is the easier part of the calculation. Uh, it's uh, similar to shred and pen, but it's just a flat increase. It doesn't. It's not interacting with resistances or armor in any way. Um, it, it just, uh, whatever you have is whatever you have. So, for example, um, if you have 10% increased damage taken, like we talked about, early on here, um, then it's just a flat 10% more damage that they take. They do add together with each other though. Um, they're independent from shred and pen, but if you have multiple sources of increased damage taken, those do add together. So you have a 10% and a 15%, then you have 25% increased damage taken, um, not a 10 and a 15% multiplier. Hope that makes sense. Um, yeah, it's, it's additive with itself, just like sh uh, shred and pen are additive with themselves, but they're not additive with each other, shred and pen are their own multiplier and then increased damage taken is its own multiplier okay this is a really big topic and it can be kind of challenging to understand in this uh, format i understand that hopefully hopefully i'm getting across the ideas here fairly well if you find yourself a little bit confused by it i have um several guides on max that cover these topics especially the damage explained one and i've got lots and lots of examples in there with um with numeric, with math, with lots of different uh, ways of kind of showing it. So if you feel that you need a better visual representation than we have here, I strongly encourage you to check out the damage explained guide. And then if you want to see the ailments and buffs, also those, those are really helpful resources for getting a grasp on how damage works in this game. It's not super complicated, um, but there are interactions that maybe aren't, aren't so obvious or a little surprising, especially for someone who maybe is not a... I, a, a typical ARPG player, these will very much help you out. And also, of course, we have part two coming up, which is going to explain some of the other aspects uh, of offense. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope this was helpful and informative to you. If you have other questions that this or the guides on Maxwell um, do not um, fully explain for you, or you just want some, um, some verification on something, feel free to come hang out with me on Twitch and ask questions there, or join us on Discord where we have a community that either I or some of the community will be help, uh, happy to help you out. Uh, thanks once again for watching. I hope you have a great time in Last Epoch, and I will see you all again real soon.